Hey everyone, my name is Donald and in this video we're going to go ahead and discuss some of the flex options that you have when you're in the header builder. These should apply for the footer builder as well and actually some of it should apply for the content builder but right now we're just going to focus on the header. So once you're inside the header builder you'll see that we have a top and then we can go ahead and add a bar just like that and we want to go ahead and add a container and then in that container I'm just going to add a button. So you can see just like this, you see we've got it on all devices. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and color these a little bit just so it's easier for you all to see. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. So when you're inside of the actual header builder, you have a lot of options with flex and those flex options multiply from container to container, uh, bar to bar, and actually some of the elements too. So for example, the bar is this entire blue space. This container one is the red space. And then we have our button inside of the container one. If we wanted to go ahead and add another container, container, we can go ahead and duplicate that. And we have a copy of the container. Let's go ahead and change that to like a green. So you notice that one's on one side and the other is on the other side. If we go into our bar settings, under the flex layout, you can see under horizontal, we have space between. Now what this means is it's going to go ahead and take the remaining space that the containers do not take up and basically put it in between the two containers and split them as far apart as possible. If you have multiple containers, so let's say we have a third container, it's going to go ahead and take up all of the space that's available, so everything that's blue, and it's gonna divide it between the three different containers. So let's go ahead and make this one a different color as well. So you can see we have our three containers, red, green, and pink. So let's go ahead and let's say we want all of these to be in the center, all next to each other. Under the flex layout of the bar, on the blue bar, we go to space between and we choose center. They all are all straight next to each other. If you want them to be um, spaced out, but there still be some space on the outer parts of them, the left and the right. So we go ahead and click space around. And so those give us the options of having a little bit more space here and a little bit more space here. So you might be thinking that when there's space between, we still have some space on the outside, left here and the right here. That's because we have the outer spacing right here set of the bar, the two. And if we knock that down to zero, you can see that they completely go to the edges. If you're looking to maybe have them all everything to the left, you can use start. Everything to the right, you use end. And those are basically all of your options for the horizontal part. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to space between. Uh, we have a row set up and a column, row and column buttons. Right now it's setting a row so everything is in line with each other. If we switch to column, they're all stacked on top of each other. And now this looks funky because the height of the bar is set to six. And if we set it to auto, It'll take up as much space as this button needs. So there's no need to um, expand that or anything like that. If you want it to be taller, you can do this to be uh, 10. And you can see that they start showing the color of the background. Um, you can do it to pixels. So you can have them set in a row. And that's just for the bar. So these are the bar settings. And when we're working with the flex, it messes with these three containers, all of the containers. Now it's completely different if you want to change the way that the buttons or the elements are inside of that one container. All of those flex options that you saw on the bar are also in the container. And we'll get to that in just a bit. Let's go back to row and we'll go to reverse layout. Let me go ahead and knock this back down. Reverse layout. So you can see that the red, green, and then pink. If we click reverse layout, 
it switches so that everything is down to the right hand side because we have it set as horizontal. The horizontal has it set as start and if we reverse the layout it's going to put it to the end. So if we unclick that and click end they're all to the end and then we can reverse the layout and click it to the start. Now when you notice when you click reverse layout let's go back to normal it goes red green pink when you click reverse layout it goes pink green red it reverses the entire bar and basically just flips it 180 degrees um, all of the words are still right reading but all of the elements are flipped 180 degrees okay so that's what the reverse layout does let's look at some of the options for the container so let's do a typical scenario where we have let's see we have an image okay and then we also have a navigation now some might say let's put the navigation inside of the container and while that works they'll be right next to each other so you can see that everything is inside this red container normally we don't have navigations that are next to each other like this it looks a little funky on your website so what you have to do is see how you have a set space between if you go to field space equally everything the entire container stretches across the entire bar and you can't even see the bar anymore so if we go back to our bar settings put this back on and a lot of people do like a max content of, pic of 1200 pixels just so that you can actually um, get the boxed feel so everything's got a margin everything's got a, a like a padding on the right hand side so this would look normal as a as an actual header you, know, you have the logo left you got the navigation on the right what I typically do is I add a new container and I'll add navigation inside of that remove that fill space equally to the standard okay and then for the actual bar settings I'll do that to be the space between so it's a little bit more of uh, flexibility when you have the two containers instead of the one container you achieve the same layout but when you're hiding things on mobile it's a lot easier to have this kind of flexibility when using multiple containers so for example we have our image here and then we have our navigation over here our image can go ahead and expand and contract as much as needed depending on how big it is and then this can go ahead and expand depending on how many links you have this is the way I usually like to have it set up. Okay, so let's talk more about the, like having a stacked look. So this is all inline. So we want the navigation to be underneath of this image, of the logo, and we want everything to be centered. So if we switch it to column, and this is the bar settings, switch the bar settings to column, everything is stacked on top. Now underneath the bar settings, instead of having horizontals for start, we want everything to be in the center of the bar. So we should switch that to center. And we can up this just so it's a little bit of a taller space. I don't have any images on here. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can... upload an image here okay so we have that there and then we have we can adjust our our width to do that okay so we have that and let's go ahead just for the sake of the video add a background to our second container just so that we don't get anything confused so you can see all of our two both of our containers that we have there. So that is how we can achieve a stacked look with the actual um, header builder instead of doing an inline look. All you have to do is just switch it from column to row or from row to column. And that's how you can achieve that and also switching it to space between. Everything can be left aligned, everything can be right aligned, or you can even have space around it so that you see you have the little padding over here and over here. 
So if we want to do space between like normal, and then we switch this back down to six. Those are the different options. Now, when you're getting into the elements, it's a little bit different for the flex. So for example, uh, flex layout, we have columns to where you can stack it, the row, reverse layout so you can switch it, uh, wrap the children so that when the screen gets too small, it'll just start putting the elements underneath of each other. And you also have the flex layout here as well. So you won't be able to see these visually as they are, um, it depends on how wide these are and things of that nature. And then you have vertical, so stretch, start, you can have them at the top, you have them at the center of them, you can have them at the end and stretch it so that it's centered, but then it goes from top to bottom. There's a little bit of a difference so that if you do stretch and you make your top links a color, So we have them as centered, okay? So if we wanted to add a background to our actual uh, navigation links, we have that there. But if we hit stretch, then it goes from top to bottom. And you don't actually have any visibility of the container behind it. So you can see it here, start, end, and then we have center, and then we have stretch. And these options are going to vary based on like your images. So there's, like you said, there's, like I said, there's no images uh, that have flex. Um, you have a bunch of different options like your um, your areas, your inline uh, navigation, your searches, things of that nature. Those all have like your flex options. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a very quick brief on how to work with Flexbox in the header. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a great day.